uh, hello there my name is uh, michael Kaonga kamanga and i am back with the chemistry from one so today we are going to look at the uh, separation of mixtures and the uh, will be discussing decanting so decanting is a, a method of separation of mixtures we have looked at the, the definition of a mixture we have looked at the types of mixtures can you recall what are the types of mixtures types of mixtures can you recall uh, yes we have uh, homogeneous mixtures and the uh, heterogeneous mixtures a good example of a homogeneous mixture is a mixture of uh, sugar and water making sugar solution can you give me an example of a, a heterogeneous mixture? Yes, you can say cooking oil and the water. Cooking oil and water. So in today's class, we will look at the, uh, we'll focus much on the heterogeneous mixtures. Uh, for instance, the mixture of uh, water and cooking oil. Have you ever thought of uh, how you can separate the two? How can you separate the mixture of uh, water and cooking oil? Have you ever thought of uh, a method which can be used? Uh, don't worry, because in this lesson, you will see how we can separate a mixture a heterogeneous mixture where you have two solutions which are immiscible they don't dissolve in each other so two liquids which are immiscible they don't dissolve in each other so we can separate them by a process which is known as decanting so in this lesson yes we'll focus on decanting Now, uh, as a reminder, a mixture of a liquid and an insoluble solid uh, is a type of a heterogeneous mixture in which the solid does not dissolve in the liquid. So this results in the solid particles uh, dispersed throughout the liquid, but not uniformly. Now, here are the characteristics of such kind of a mixture. If you look at the appearance, the mixture often appears cloudy or murky due to the presence of solid particles suspended in the liquid. So the appearance, usually it is cloudy because you can be able to see the solid particles which are suspended in the liquid. On separation, so over time the solid particles may settle at the bottom due to gravity forming a sediment. And the, the overall process uh, is called sedimentation. So over time, uh, if you allow the mixture to settle, the solid particles may settle at the bottom due to gravity forming a sediment. And why are the solid particles settling at the bottom? Yes, it is indeed due to gravity, but also the solid particles are denser than the liquid particles. So another characteristic is filtration. So the solid particles can typically be separated from the liquid using filtration or decantation using filtration or decantation examples mm, on the characteristics you have sun and water when sun is mixed with water 
the salt the sand particles do not dissolve and can be seen suspended in the liquid over time the sand will settle to the bottom so indeed a mixture of sand which is a solid and water which is a liquid uh, these two sand does not dissolve in order so you can be able to see that this is sand and this is water as you can see in this diagram you see this is water the blue color and this is sand so the sand is settling at the bottom because sand is denser than water so indeed an example is sand and water can you give me further examples more examples of this type of a mixture yes you can write as many examples as you can you can write in the comment section thank you for that then he, another example is a mix of chalk and water so the chalk here it is chalk dust a mix of chalk uh, and water the chalk which is in a powdered form so chalk powder mixed with water results in a suspension where the chalk particles do not dissolve so the chalk particles will not dissolve as you can see here a mixture of chalk and water the chalk uh, particles does not dissolve and they will always be suspended so this is also another example of uh, this type of mixture remember it is heterogeneous in nature where you can know that this is uh, particle A and this is particle B which is forming uh, a mixture or a solution then we also have a mix of flour and water so mixing flour with water creates a suspension as well that appears cloudy remember on the appearance we said usually uh, the appearance is murky or cloudy as you can see this is the cloudy with flower particles dispersed throughout so the flower particles are dispersed throughout no wonder the mixture is looking cloudy so indeed on the appearance as you can see it is cloudy now in scientific terms such mi mixtures are often referred to as suspensions so suspensions can be separated into their individual components through various physical methods you can use settling you can use decantation or filtration so such kind of uh, mixtures that are known as suspensions so in suspensions we can separate such kind of mixtures using so many physical methods remember in mixtures the particles are physically uh, joined together but not chemically so we can also separate mixtures using physical methods such as settling decantation or filtration and then we have uh, uh, in this lesson as i already promised you i said we'll focus much on a decanting so decanting is a simple and effective method for separating mixtures particularly when you have a liquid and an insoluble solid or two immiscible liquids so by definition when we say two liquids are immiscible it simply means that they do not mix they will not dissolve in each other so you can separate them using decanting a good example of uh, immiscible liquids we have uh, a mixture of oil and water a mixture of oil and water because oil will never dissolve in water the same water will not mix with oil so water in a liquid form oil in a liquid form so the two they are immiscible immiscible liquids now let us have an overview a clear picture a clear dis uh, description of this physical process 
known as decanting. Well, in decanting, this is used to separate a solid that has settled at the bottom of the liquid or to separate two immiscible liquids with different densities. Because each liquid has its own density. So if the densities are different, it simply means that the other one has a higher density while the other one has a lower density. It, it, it will not work if they are having the very same densities, no. So decanting is used to separate, yes, a solid that has settled at the bottom of a liquid. Uh, or to separate two immiscible liquids with different densities. So this information, this description is very, very important because we are considering the fact that uh, uh, the liquids are having different densities. If you look at the uh, distortion, yes, we have looked at distortion. We said in fractional distortion, uh, we utilize the fact that uh, uh, liquids have different boiling points. So because of that, we can uh, separate them using distortion, whether simple distortion or fractional distortion. Now, how does the process of uh, decanting works? So let us look at uh, the overall process. The first point is settling. So in settling, you're simply allowing the mixture to sit undisturbed over time. So you are allowing it to settle. So remember, you have a mixture, so you allow it to settle. And with time, over time, you expect that the heavier solid particles or the denser liquid will settle at the bottom due to gravity. It will settle at the bottom due to gravity. So the more denser liquid is the one which is settling at the bottom. Because, yeah, it is very obvious that uh, the, 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 the liquid which is denser should be down, while which is uh, uh, having a lower density should be on top. Then we have uh, pouring off. Remember, we are describing the process of decanting. So you simply, carefully, you pour the top layer of the liquid into another container. So you're having a container where there's a mixture of these two liquids which are immiscible. Then you have another container which is empty. So you're just pouring the liquid which is on top uh, in a separate container. So you do this carefully, and this is done slowly, again, to avoid disturbing the settled solid or the denser liquid. To avoid disturbing the settled solid or the denser liquid. Now, on separation. On separation, uh, the process leaves the solid or the denser liquid behind in the original container effectively separating the two components so you just leave the, the process leaves the solid or the denser liquid behind in the original container effectively separating the two components so you use uh, uh, on tools which you are supposed to use you use a beaker or a container so typically you use to hold the mixture. As you can see, this is a picker. This is a picker. Remember the tools and the apparatuses which we use in the lab, we mentioned about the picker. So this is the picker. So in a decanting process, you use a container. If you don't have a picker, you can use a container. So either way, it will work the same. So the process, as I've already said, it leaves the solid or the denser liquid behind in the original container, effectively separating the two components. Then again, you need a stirring rod just to make sure that the two liquids are immiscible. Even if you can stir them, you never see them mixing. 
you stir and you leave them to settle, you still more observe that the two they are immiscible, they are not dissolving in each other, they are not mixing, they will form a layer. So this may be used to guide the liquid being poured to ensure precision and minimize disturbance of the settled layer. Yeah, so the styling rod is not necessarily, necessarily used for styling. When you are pouring the liquid, when you are decanting, you are just making sure you are guiding the liquid uh, into the empty container or the empty beaker. So these are the styling loads. Of course, you need one. So even if the Im image here is showing two, but you just need one. One is enough. Then on examples of decanting, you can have wine decanting, oil and water decanting, sand and water. Okay? So these are just examples where uh, the process of decanting, the physical process of decanting, can uh, be undertaken. So you have wine decanting, where wine is often decanted to separate it from a sediment that forms during aging. Remember, wine undergoes the process of aging. So the clear liquid, which is the wine, is poured off into another container, leaving the sediment behind. So you just leave the sediment behind. Then you have oil and water. So in a mixture of oil and water, the oil being less dense will float on top. So decanting allows you to pour off the oil, leaving the water behind. Says yes, oil and water. So a mixture of oil and water, remember oil is less dense than water. So what do you expect? If you mix them, then the oil will be on top while water will be down because water is denser than oil. So the oil will be floating on top of water. Then uh, the, the usual example, sand and water, where after sand settles at the bottom of a container of water, the clear water can be decanted, leaving the sand behind. So you're just pouring off, you're decanting. Then by the end of the day, the sand will remain, uh, it will be left behind. So yes, you can use wine, decanting, oil and water. You have sand and water. Okay, so I've taken you through the general process of decanting. We have looked at the description of decanting. We have also looked at the, how uh, examples of where can you apply this process of decanting. Even the materials which you can use in decanting. Having done, therefore, having done that, therefore, let us see, uh, watch the video. This video is just illustrating uh, the process of decantation. So I will take you through the video, then you will see uh, what I've been explaining here. So let us watch the video. So this video will be uh, illustrating um, the whole process of uh, decantation. Yeah, so in the process of decanting, yeah, so when the components are separated, you see the less dense substance could be removed by scooping using a spoon or it can be removed by slowly pulling out the less dense substance. Yeah, so we are using oil and water. As you can see, this is our water and this is the oil. If we mix them, uh, by the way, between oil and water, which one is more dense? Yes, it is water. Water is denser, so therefore, we expect that the oil should float on top of the water. So we are mixing there. 
as you can see indeed the oil will float on top of water a sign that water is denser than oil even if you stir but still more there will be a formation of two layers so there's a layer of oil on top and then there's a layer of water as you can see separate uh, container as you can see is it a tumbler <laughs> yeah as you can see there so we want to make sure that the oil is uh, we we'll have to separate this mixture so we have water separately and oil separately As you can see here this is beautiful because now we have water leather water and cooking oil so we have separated the two and the whole process is known as decantation so this is nice this is straightforward it can be used on a larger scale uh, uh, the way we have seen Okay, so that was the, the video showing us a, a, a brief description on decantation. So we can also watch another video just adding to uh, the previous one to show that uh, how decantation takes place. So let us just add another video as you see here. So this one briefly again is talking about decantation. For you to easy, easily understand. Today's question is What is decantation? Yeah, so probably you should answer that question in the comment section. What is decantation? So you can type your answer there. Thank you for the feedback. Decantation is the process of separating the components of a mixture by pouring the liquid component from one container to another. So here they're just using a mixture of sand and water. In the previous uh, description, there was a mixture of oil and water. Without disturbing the lower layer or sediments in a mixture. Decantation is used to separate solids from liquids. Yeah. So it's not only solids from liquids, it can also be liquid from liquid. Because here, they're talking about liquid and solid because they're using sand and water. As you can see, sand and water. Rather, sand and water. So sand is denser than water. That is why sand is the bottom, while water is on top let's, let's take, take a look, look at, at these examples, examples. 
The sand in a sand and water mixture can be separated from water by letting the sand settle at the bottom of the container. Then, carefully pouring the water into another container. So now you have your sand. Decantation is also applied when washing rice grains before cooking. In this process, water is poured out slowly from the pot, leaving the rice grains behind. The water decanted from the rice grains after washing contains impurities that are likewise removed from rice. In a mixture of two immiscible liquids, such as oil and water, one substance stays on top of the other substance in the container. One way of separating substances in such mixtures is through decantation. In the case of the oil and water mixture, oil can be separated by decanting or slowly pouring it into another container, leaving the water behind. So that is it about it, the decantation. Then um, having looked at uh, the overall process of decanting, uh, let us look at uh, let us finish by looking at the advantages of decanting. So decanting is very advantageous. Uh, it is simple, that is simplicity, and it is also cost effective and it is non-destructive. So yes, decanting is easy to perform and it requires minimal equipment. So it is indeed simple because you don't need a lot to use this process. Again, it is cost effective. So no expensive equipment or materials are needed and it is also non-destructive because it doesn't alter the chemical properties of the components being separated. It doesn't alter the chemical properties of components being separated. And the decanting is just a fundamental uh, technique in both the laboratory and everyday settings. Valued for its simplicity, effectiveness uh, in separating mixtures with distinct layers of phases. So this is the overall summary, the general summary for the process of decanting. Yes, it is simpler, it is cost effective, and it is non-destructive. Because other methods of separation of mixtures, they are somehow destructive. But in decanting, the process is non-destructive. Okay, so, we have looked at the, we have revised that the, the types of mixtures, homogeneous, heterogeneous. We have seen that heterogeneous mixtures, more especially suspensions, they can be separated by several physical methods. You talk of decanting, filtration. And the, yes, we proceeded by looking at the, the general process of decanting the materials used, the examples, and we have also appreciated the videos illustrating the process of decanting. So having done all of that, uh, let us see, do the following activity. So in this activity, please remember to give me feedback. Provide your answers in the comment section. I'll provide my suggested answers as well. Remember, the answers I'm giving you, the suggested answers. So don't be limited to those answers. Share with me your answers. You can compare your answers and the suggested answers, and you can also research more and the, uh, look for more questions. And you can ask the questions using the, uh, the comment section. Please, I'll be happy see your feedback now the first question is what is decantation used for how does decantation differ from filtration 
what are the limitations of decantation and the, can the decantation be used to separate two miscible liquids what factors affect the efficiency of decantation and what are some practical applications of decantations well for extra questions for more questions please you can ask them through the whatsapp number you can also use help at zulendo.org you can visit zulendo online and the zulendo.org please we need your feedback uh, in today's lesson i've used the following uh, references i've used excel and succeed junior chemistry book one achievers in chemistry book one jungle chemistry book one samuel kalea chemistry book one on illustrations, design, and graphics, we have used, was used by Charlotte Dunning and Dave Momba on work Zulendo. For the photos, please feel free to visit the links. So these links have been provided for you to appreciate where the photos and the videos uh, were taken. Well, until we meet again in the next lesson, bye-bye.